George Orwell called advertising the rattling of a stick inside a swill bucket, but it's actually an incredibly creative industry. And to find out just how creative it is, we spoke to an advertising insider. For legal reasons, I have to point out our insider is played by an actor in a wig. So you're in advertising, yes? Yeah. Sorry, that was a reflex action. That's all right. Oh, in that case. Right. Sorry. That's fine. <sighs> anyway, uh, perhaps you could start by telling us exactly what sort of f is attracted to advertising in the first place. Well, a lot of people have the idea that working in advertising gives you some kind of creative freedom. We <laughs> don't. They siphon off any interesting thoughts you might have and use them all to sell boring everyday household objects like cat food. So any creativity is hamstrung? Well, that's assuming there was any creativity in the first place. A lot of ad agencies just don't care. They're just after new ideas and don't care where, how or who they get them from. Now, for the most part, advertising creative means person who spends a long time on the internet every day looking for other people's cool ideas that can be stolen and used to sell stuff. Clients, what are they like? <laughs> They're the least creative people in the industry. They're the number crunchers, the marketing types. They understand branding, market share, and little else. And would they actually come on a shoot? Fuck yeah. When you're shooting, there's a cable running out the back of the camera into a nearby room where the image you're making is being watched by anything up to 30 people. Ad agencies, creatives, account people, clients and so on, all of whom will have an opinion on the shot that's being set up. Once they've deliberated and some kind of moronic consensus has been achieved, a lackey walks back to the studio floor to tell the director what changes they want to make. It's a bit like trying to write a book while the editor, publisher and printer stand over your shoulder nudging your arm and saying, don't push that key, push that one, no, that one. What sort of thing are they looking out for? Well, the load is a good one, normally pertaining to chewing gum or confectionery. That's the moment where the sweet is popped into the mouth. It's the loading moment. Mm, right, so the director's shooting a load into the actress's mouth. Different gum companies have different ways they like their gum loaded. They publish booklets for directors to study so that the load is uniform across their ads. On any shoot, there'll probably be one poor sod from the client side whose sole job is to ensure that the load goes off according to company guidelines. If they come home without a proper loading shot, that poor fucker gets the sack. How's the industry changed in the last 10 years? Well, advertising's global now, so everything has to be standardised so it won't offend any of the cultures it will be shown to. Bizarre rules start to emerge, like the hero can't wear trainers, because in Russia that means you're a gangster, or denim means you're a homosexual in Indonesia. Everything's homogenised and you're left with an unappealing slab of mulch. Some of these territories are very open about what skin colours they want on their TVs. I've been in meetings where a perfectly talented black actor has been on the table for a role and the agency producer will say up front as you like, forget it, he'd never play in Turkey or France or whatever. That kind of casual racism's commonplace. Mm. You alright? Oh, sorry, no, it's just you've really depressed me. Sorry. That's better. So, what's the future for advertising? No one knows. In terms of uncertainty, it's where the music industry was three years ago. New media's come along and blown all the old models apart. They're all shitting themselves, basically, because the internet and Sky Plus has done a lot to empower consumers. If they don't like an ad, they just skip it. Even ten years ago, you had a captive audience during the commercial break. Not anymore. Okay. <laughs>